Chapter 4. The First Dervish Resumes His Tale O slaves of God, I said to the princess, as your servant I will obey whatever you suggest. Appreciating that I was amenable to her orders, she ordained that two swift horses be brought from the royal stables. The princess dressed herself as a man, and, heavily armed, we set off on our journey by night. Day after day we travelled. Sometimes we hunted animals and ate their flesh. The princess, from time to time, said to me, For your sake I have left my parents, my country, my honour, my all. May it never be that you should behave in a faithless manner towards me. I assured her, Not all men are alike. I love you. Something was wrong with the youth who betrayed you. I have thrown in my lot with you. All that I have is yours. Try me, and you will find that I will not weaken. One day we arrived at a plain with few features to relieve the monotony. No house, nothing. Even then the princess's presence served to make it seem attractive to me. Then we came to a wide river of awesome aspect. Nothing could be seen but water, and there seemed to be no way to cross. For a time we stood there, trying to think of some way of getting over this expanse. Then I suggested to the princess that she might wait for me while I rowed to find either a boat or a ferry forward. She said that she was tired and hungry, and that she would certainly wait there. I left her sitting under a huge tree. I went away and searched and searched, but could find no means of crossing. When I got back to the tree, the princess had disappeared. I sought everywhere for my precious jewel. She was not in the tree, nor under it, nor anywhere that I could determine. I became absolutely desperate, and, tearing my clothes and wandering like a madman, I became a fakir, looking for her throughout the land. Eventually, I came to a mountain. The idea suggested itself to me that I should climb it and throw myself from the top, ending my existence and therefore an insupportable misery. When I was about to cast myself upon the rocks below the mountain, someone touched my arm. I looked around and saw a horseman dressed in green with a veil over his face. He said to me, Why try to destroy your life? Despair is unfaithfulness towards God. While there is breathing, there is hope. A few days from now, three dervishes will meet. Like you, they are entangled in difficulties. They have had problems and experiences like your own. The king of that country, of Rum, is called Azad Bacht. He, too, is in great distress. When he meets you four, the heart's desire of every one of you will be fulfilled. I caught hold of his stirrup and kissed it, saying, O oh, friend of God, what you have said has consoled me. Please tell me in God's name, who are you? He said, I am Ali. My function is that whenever anyone is in trouble, I am there to succour him. As soon as he had spoken, he disappeared. At this miraculous intervention, I felt much encouraged, and, following the advice of the spiritual guide, I set off for Istanbul in Rum. After the hardships that were my lot on that journey, I have encountered you. We have met. We have conversed. It only remains for us to encounter King Azad Bacht. When we do, we shall surely gain the desire of our hearts. O oh, spiritual guides, let us pray that our problems may be resolved. Azad Bacht, still in concealment, and having listened with great attention to this tale, started to listen to the story of the second dervish. <laughs>